All right, welcome to this episode of the Joyful Scaling Podcast. Ladies, you know I love introducing you to women who are on mission to serve and empower other women. And today I'm doing exactly that. Meet Natalia and Melissa. Natalia Williams is the owner and founder of Charisma Beauty Hair and Makeup Studio here in South Carolina in Greenville. And she is super passionate about encouraging female entrepreneurs along their journey. Like herself, she sees the rise of women launching businesses as a huge shift in the workforce. Many have walked through great challenges to reach success. Uh, I want you also to meet Melissa, Melissa Fawcett, after years of homeschooling and teaching in both the private and public sectors, she's founded her own tutoring business called Creative Minds Tutoring in in 2020. And together, Natalia and Melissa have co-founded a beautiful organization. It's called Fire, Heart, and Soul Women of Resiliency, and it's to bring inspiration and empowerment to female entrepreneurs through the power of story community, and support. Welcome, Natalia and Melissa, to the show. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Judy, so much for having us on. Yes. Absolutely. You know, I don't know that I've ever had a podcast with three of us instead of two, so um, this is kind of, this is, makes it a little bit more difficult to make sure we all speak, <laughs> but let's start with Natalia. Tell us about how, tell us the backstory of Fire, Heart, and Soul, if you would. Um. Well, uh, Melissa, quite simply one night we went and we had a girl's night, just had some dinner and we were just talking and talking about things that we felt called to in our life. And we knew women specifically was something that we both felt called to. And we talked about how we're seeing this shift, as you mentioned, in the workforce with women rising up and starting businesses and it was born over a dinner <laughs> one night. Um, we, we actually, we were collaborating with some of the um, servers at the place we were in and we were all just talking about us as women and how amazingly powerful and resilient we are. And that's how this came to be. And um, I share that story and people are like, what you planned that in one night. And I'm like, yeah, it was just, <laughs> one night. Um, and then the, I think it was a day or two later, later, excuse me, Melissa, you can correct me on this. Um, we were tagged in something on Facebook and it had like um, resiliency in it. And I literally was like on my phone, I sat straight up in my bed and I'm like, that's it. That's the tagline, women of resiliency. And so yeah. that's how it came to be. <laughs> that is awesome. You know, I have to say this idea of one idea coming to you like, like that. I mean, it's a God thing and it can change everything. And, you know, the woman I just uh, interviewed and that episode dropped today, she got an idea through the pandemic and she built an entire new couple of businesses from it. So believe me, yeah, when God's involved, it can, it can happen just like that. So Melissa, tell us more about that. Like, like what, um, this, this, this idea of, you know, resiliency is so powerful. Talk to me about, um, the importance of story as it relates to the events that, that, um, that you're going to be putting on. Yes. So, um, being a teacher, I love stories and I find that kids and a lot of times adults even really react to story. And so talking with Natalia and several other women, in our area through networking events and just getting to know people, the more that we would share, hey, here's what I've been through and um, here's what I've created with my life out of those trials and challenges, more women would feel inspired and empowered and not alone. Like, oh my gosh, you went through that. I went through that too. And it's so inspiring to see where you're at now. Um, So being able to be, even a tangible presence to a lot of women of, you know, yeah, here's my story. And here I am standing in front of you saying, you know, I could do this. You can do this too. I want to encourage you. Let me help you. Um, And it's just something we find is really needed um, in the world today, especially here in Greenville. Um, You know, women are rising up and we're (laughs) taking, um, 
the opportunities to express our creativity and you know dive into those passions and things we've always wanted to do so there's something very powerful when women come together and share those stories and again there's that sense of hey I'm not alone and I can do this too and um yeah I I I see that too I mean I feel like the women that I work with they're like you know six figures or almost six figure entrepreneurial women, a lot of come from corporate or from professional backgrounds, and then they start out on their own. And it's amazing to me how through all their experience and their education, and yet there's, there's always there this element of imposter syndrome. Like I know she did it, but I don't know if I can. And we all, you know, I'd I'd love for you to speak to that, Natalia. I mean, I'll admit that I struggle a bit with imposter syndrome, a heck of a lot less today than even a year ago. But I think it's, I think we're all a work in progress here in that regard. Preach. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, yeah, I still struggle with it myself. Um, And like you, that's an area of continued growth. And I think when you, share that. I think Melissa and I were at an event one time and we were talking, I can't remember who we were talking to. And we just opened up about that, that, that feeling you have like, oh my gosh, what in the world are you doing? You don't know enough. You can't do that. Or you don't, you're not qualified enough or experienced enough in that. What are you thinking? And those sabotaging thoughts and we were talking to somebody and it was just neat because we brought that out and the person opened up and said, you know what, I struggle with those things too. You know, I think they even said they asked their significant other and are we going to be okay? <laughs> and it, it it's real. It's real. And it needs to be talked about because we all struggle with it in some form or fashion. And when you're able to speak into that and be transparent and vulnerable it really ignites a, okay, you know what? You know, I think there's an element of being superwoman sometimes. Mm. And when they can see that you're a human and you have that, it really just helps. And then, you know, it, it just opens up for more people to share in that mm-hmm. fashion. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Uh, I just wanted to add before I turn to Melissa and see what you think about this whole self uh, sabotage, self deprecating type thing that we women are so darn good at. Mm -hmm. uh, I I do think that for whatever reason, like it just seems easier to look at others and have so much faith and hope and expectation for them. And then all we see when we look in the mirror is, you know, for me, the wrinkles, the chin, the, you know, it's like, why is that? Like, like I, I I often go to God and I say, Lord, you made your daughters to be strong and powerful. So why are the flaws the first thing we, you know, see? So what do you think about that, Melissa? Do you ever, do you struggle with this as well? Oh, definitely. I mean, we are here and we started this not by any means because we have it all figured out or are perfect or, I mean, we struggle every day. I mean, there's times that I'll get up and what in the world are you doing? You can't run a business. What are you thinking? (laughs) And yes, it's something a little bit universal among women, I think, where we just, there's so much expectation on us and we're nurturers by heart. We want to take care of everyone and everything else. And a lot of times at the expense of ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, we definitely don't have it all together and we struggle, but that's also just that powerful part of story and resiliency is look, I'm still working on this. I still struggle every day, but I'm getting up and I'm doing it and I'm, you know, making these things happen and being able to come around each other and support each other and that and be like, Hey, you're doing great. It's okay to have a bad day. It's okay to struggle because that's what makes us human. So. Yeah, that is so right. And I think that our struggles that we've gone through and overcome by God's grace, those struggles really become our strength. Mm-hmm. Cause I know for me, I go closer to the Lord when I have a struggle I get more empathetic and compassionate to others when I go through stuff. And, you know, I love this. I love that word resiliency, but guess what, ladies, if we didn't have the struggle, ladies listening, if we didn't have the struggle, then there'd be no need to be resilient because we would just always be awesome. Right. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Absolutely. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I would love it if you ladies wouldn't mind sharing your personal story of overcoming. Would you mind Natalia? Uh, I'd love to. Yeah. That would be such an encouragement. I'm sure. Well, um, I mean, there's been significant things that have happened over the course of 40, almost 42 years of walking on this planet. Um, But there was something very specific that I experienced in the last couple of years. And um, I, I have a chronic illness and I didn't know I had a chronic illness and the cro- chronic illness just showed up one night. Um, we had no idea what it was. It took many, many months to get a correct diagnosis. We, we went on a roller coaster. Um, in that time, I was bedridden for about nine months um, I couldn't cook. Um, I couldn't do very basic things that I was used to doing. My husband had to carry me from room to room. I had people coming into my home to clean and to bring meals. And it was a very, um, it was a very humbling um, experience for me. Um, I was a woman who could get up and get stuff done just like that, you know, um, have my quiet time in the morning and go out, run three miles, come back, cook breakfast, do two loads of laundry before my husband got out of the bed and then get out the door. <laughs> go to the oh, I love it. Yes, I was, I, was that I was that woman and I wasn't that woman anymore. And, um, it was a, it was a very dark, intense time for me. And, um, there was a lot of things that happened and um, obviously I'm doing a lot better. Hallelujah. I'm doing. I'm very thankful for that. God was very gracious to me um, in that dark place. And um, I, I bargained with him a bit. <laughs> um, get me out of this bed and I'll run. <laughs> mm. I'll run. I'll live like, I'm not going to wake up tomorrow because there were many times, Judy, that I thought I wasn't going to open my eyes when I would close them. And, you know, it was a lot of things. I was sleep deprived. I lost a hundred pounds. Um, yeah, it was a very, um, I wouldn't wish that on anybody, but, and I'm still walking through treatment with it because it's invisible. Mm -hmm. Um, but, um, I think had I not walked through it, I wouldn't have had the perspective shift that I have and like you mentioned earlier em- empathy and compassion excuse me empathy and compassion mm-hmm. for um people because you can't see my illness <laughs> wow. um and it, it a lot of times I look good and on a on that day I can tell you Judy if I take a picture I know exactly how I was feeling that day mm-hmm. and just being able to to relate to people more going through that because, you know, we're, nobody on this planet is immune to stuff like that happening to them. Um, We just never know. And it's been a journey and I'm very thankful to be walking again and to be mobile again. Mm, Praise Jesus. Wow. I mean, and, and just what we were talking about, like, I look at you, you look whole, you look healthy, you look beautiful. Obviously you're a woman of great strength and yet you have gone through some real muck and mire, as I like to say, and, you know, but you've overcome that. I mean, you are, you are here in strength and gratitude to the Lord and you're doing big things. You know, you have this business and now you teamed up with Melissa to do this, to pour into more women, to build them up. I mean, it's just a testimony to who the Lord is in your life and how you are stepping in to say, Lord, I don't know what I can do, but you're calling me to this. So I'm going to step up and do it. So brava. It's just a beautiful (laughs) thing to see, really. So thank you for sharing that. Melissa, would you care to share us, you know, a little bit about your, your story and maybe a challenge that you've overcome? Uh, Yes. So I grew up in a home that was very religious um, and very much about women pretty much were just meant to be wife even, you know, be a wife and mother and raise the kids and all that. And so I always had this idea of that's what I was going to do with my life. Um, and just really growing up and going through the process of 
um, that it was actually really a cult, um, very cult-like and very oppressive. Mm. And so I found myself, um, you know, kind of leaving that and getting into a marriage that was very much that way as well, um, with just the oppression and, you know, making women small and insignificant Mm. and um, pretty much went through just a horrible divorce and found myself being a single mom and forced to figure out what I was going to do with my life and how I was going to provide for my kids. And so I decided to go back to school. Um, I realized that there was so much more to me than, you know, being part of a system that kept women small and that, you know, I had gifts and passions and talents um, that I really wanted to use and express and Um, You can't do that when someone's trying to control you and manipulate a situation. Mm -hmm. And and so I (laughs) literally feel like I got out with my life and um, I went back to school and I finished my degree as a single mom raising two boys and started this business. And it's just been incredible to watch the doors that have opened for me, um, how yeah, God really stepped in and allowed me to tap into all of my potential and my passion and um, teach and start this business and help other women along the way. So um, there's, yes. (laughs) That's just so good. I mean, thank you so much for sharing that ladies. I mean, and these are just two, here's what I know. Every lady out there has been through hell in some way or another. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. Either as a little girl with some sort of trauma, abuse, disease, some sort of something, and or when you get involved in relationships with men, I have not had good luck in that regard. I mean, I have made stupid mistakes. My first husband beat me up on my wedding night. Um, You know, and it's so funny because you don't see that, you know, people just like, I look at Natalia and I look at, I look at you, Melissa, and I'm just like, wow, these ladies have it together. So, so ladies listening, I want you to understand if, if right now as you're listening, I'm sure your heart is moved by the stories you've just heard, but I also want you to be gracious to yourself that if you are right now listening and you're saying, yeah, they did, but I can't, or you see, you feel like this mountain is in front of you and you just can't get through it, get around it, get past it. Just understand that you are not alone. And that this is exactly why I do what I do in my work. And in this podcast, this is exactly why I'm going to tell you, Melissa, do what they do. We all need to come together and love each other. And that's what exactly, you know, um, fire, heart and soul is all about, which I love, but also it's like, when we get right down to the humanness of us as women, it's like, I, I don't care like what country you're from or um, what religion you are or what any differences are. It's like, I love you. I love you, girl. I love you, sister. And it's like, so if anyone's listening right now and crying your eyes out, cause you're just feeling so at the pit. Can I just tell you, I know I've been there and I would suspect Natalia and, and Melissa have been too. And you know, if we can do it, so can you. And just reach out. And that is so hard. Let's, let's talk on that for just a second, ladies, because I know when I was a single mom and even before then going through a horrible marriage, which ended in divorce, when I had my three boys, I would like wallow in my pity, you know, and I, I had neighbors around me, but I felt like, Ooh, I don't want to impose upon them because I felt like that would be selfish. So Natalia, what what would you say to a woman out there who says, I'd love to plug in, but I don't know if I'd fit in. I don't know. That's kind of selfish for me to impose upon somebody else. It's that's the superwoman complex too. (laughs) That really truly is what that is. I'll just speak into that. I was that way. I didn't want to ask for help because I was very functional, Mm -hmm. but that voice that speaks to you they can but I can't that's not who you are you are a divine expression of love 
every single woman, human being on this planet is a divine expression of love and you have purpose on this planet and connecting, allowing yourself to be vulnerable and it's okay. (laughs) It's okay. It's, it's the whole premise behind fire, heart and soul is to create a safe space. So you can say, girl, I don't got it all together. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I don't have it all together and I'm not going to pretend like I do and it's okay. And I think a lot of times as women, and I mean, you both were single women or single moms. Okay. There's so many titles in that alone that you both filled in that point. And there's probably, there was probably an independence that you developed, but we, we need that help. We need that help. I'll use a biblical reference, for example, when they crossed over the um, the Red Sea and Moses couldn't hold both his hands up. Hmm. That's a great example. Yeah, mm-hmm. he couldn't hold both his hands up. It was Aaron and Joshua, I believe. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, they had to hold his hands up because he was tired right? That's a perfect example. Of let us be the people that hold your hands up mm. so you can keep going forward. Yeah, that's powerful. Yeah. When we come together, you know, two is greater than just one plus one, like, like mm-hmm. just the whole energy of that. So you guys have the official launch. An event is coming up uh, pretty soon. Melissa, tell us about that. Where, when, and what can we expect inside? Yes, so our launch of this official group is Wednesday, January 26th, 2022. It will be in downtown Greenville, South Carolina at the Commerce Club. So we get this beautiful view of the city of Greenville. And Natalia and I will actually be tag teaming as the first speakers for that event. So women come, they're going to have food, drinks, just a safe place to come hang out and hear our stories and uh, make connections, be encouraged. And um, I think it's funny because neither Natalia or I consider ourselves public speakers, (laughs) Um, but it's definitely something that we feel called to. And so it's a big step outside of our comfort zones to mm-hmm. say, all right, <laughs> we've got this calling and we want to encourage these other women. And so uh, we're really looking forward to it. Um, it's going to be a great evening event. Everybody is welcome. We want it to be a safe place. Again, regardless of your religious background, um, how any affiliation, everyone is welcome. It's um, we're not excluding anybody. So mm, that is so great. And that is a beautiful venue as well. That is a beautiful venue. Uh, well, I'm just curious. And I, I mean, this is just my curiosity. Do you see this ever being anything virtual like anybody? Cause I have listeners from literally all over the world. I mean, from, from Australia to China, to Africa, to Europe. I mean, we're Alaska, you know, it, I know, I know you're, I know you're local kind of sort of to me now. I'm just curious, like, when you dream about where this is going, do you see this going virtual? Yeah, absolutely. We already talked about a podcast eventually and, you know, looking into how um, we can make that all happen. Um, This will be a monthly event going forward. So, you know, we start in January and then every month there'll be a different guest speaker that is sharing her story. And uh, yeah, we've, we've got big plans and dreams for this to go, um, you know, no limits really. <laughs> that, is awesome. that is awesome. And we're going to make sure to have links for you to find out more in the show notes. I can't believe that half hour has gone way too quick. Natalia, I want each of you to have an opportunity to, um, if there's anything on your heart that we didn't yet have an opportunity to discuss that you just feel led to, to put out there. Um, please do share. Um, just, you know, ladies, you're not alone. Um, you're not alone. And maybe there's not a fire, heart, and soul in your city yet. <laughs> there you go. Yet. Yes. Yet. Right. Um, maybe that hasn't come yet. But 
you know, you have, I hope you have a good tribe around you that'll speak life into you and walk you through those dark waters and through that time and keep telling you how amazing you are because that's what you are. You're amazing. Um, there was no mistakes made when you came into this world and people need to know you're here. That's right. They need to know. That's right. I love that. You know, the name of this podcast used to be She is Extraordinary and the she wasn't me. The she is every single one of my listeners and I still maintain that. It's just that I kind of pivoted to be more business-esque as opposed to more broad. So that's the reason for the name switch. But I love that. Yes, every woman is extraordinary because she is divinely made by the Lord. All right, beautiful. Melissa, any anything on your heart you care to share before we wrap up today? Yeah, I would say I know from personal experience, reaching out and asking for help is very difficult because we have this idea that it somehow shows that we're weak minded Mm -hmm. and nothing could be further from the truth. When you reach out, you're actually showing incredible strength and courage um, to receive this love and support other people can give you. So whatever that looks like, reach out, um, ask for help, ask for support we are here and I would say to any woman, it does not matter where you've come from or where you've been, you have incredible worth and value. And like Natalia said, you are meant to be here. Mm, wow, reason. I love that. Yeah. I love that. Thank you so much. As you were yeah. talking, I was like, I want us to trade in uh, our guilt, our shame, mm-hmm. our regret our self-loathing. I mean, sometimes I can just hate myself. I mean, it's, it's horrible. And people would never watch Judy. Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm a human being. So let's, let's trade all that negative crap, which is a lie of the enemy. None of that's true. That's just, that's a lie and trade that in for the truth of who you are in Christ that, you know, trade, trade all that for, um, the powerful, bold, courageous person that you are and the, and that powerful woman that you were made to be. And I, you know, if you've listened to the podcast at all, you know, that my whole mantra in life or or business is when we finally say bye-bye to the fear, the doubt, and the insecurity, and we surrender it all to Christ. And we say, "Uh uh-uh, I'm going to lay it at your feet, Lord. Now I'm going to accept and receive who I am in you. That is when we step into our God-given purpose and use those gifts that he gave for us for that very reason. And I see that in both of you, Natalia and Melissa, thank you so much for sharing those gifts. And I look forward to meeting you one day real soon. So thank you so much. Thank you, Judy. Thank you, Judy. (laughs) All right, ladies, thank you for listening. If you haven't yet subscribed, please make sure to do so. And if you wouldn't mind taking a moment and leaving a rating review, we would love that as well. Thank you for listening and we will see you next time.